It is April the 30th, 2022. I'm Chris, and this is the future of photography. The future of photography. And with me, Adrian and Jeremiah. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. 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 Welcome back from your holiday. Ah, yeah. Wake up at the North Sea. It was beautiful. On a small mm-hmm. island with uh, thousands of birds and there were sheep and rabbits and, of course, the sea around. It was so relaxing. So whatever what, whatever you bring up as a topic today is not going to phase me. So it sounds completely um, opposite of Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> you are not too far from the beach either, right? No, I'm close. The different beach is kind nice, of beach, I have though. To say, yes, a little bit different. Yes. A lot of sheep there uh, disguised as humans, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. All right. Um, what do we want to talk about today? Jeremiah, you made a suggestion. We, we are going to talk about presentation of photography in what we now call broadly the metaverse, which is, I guess, to our mutual understanding, the a virtual kind of environment uh, which we can enter with goggles it- or with screens. Is a website a part of the metaverse? Uh, I, I would argue that it really is, but a very crude, um, a, a very crude one. Uh, I mean, the the, incur- the, the, yeah. the the term metaverse <clears throat> is uh, is um, I believe it goes back to Snow Crash to a novel from 1992 yeah. and Neil Stevenson. Yeah. Exactly, and uh, in in Wikipedia, if you look, I, I did look it up when you suggested this, and it says a, the, a metaverse is a network of three D virtual worlds focused on social connection, pretty much. So yeah, I think that's probably limited at this point because I think it's become more of a cultural phrase rather than an actual environmental phrase. Though, yeah. though I think from a from an, in, an investment point of view, and all the money coming into what is defined as the metaverse is the ability for us to experience uh, an alternative way of perceiving similar cultural buildings, environments, concerts, exhibits within a non-meat space. Or <laughs> by meat space, I... Right? So this is this is something that's of interest to me because Jeremiah, you you challenged me at the beginning of this year that one of the things I should do, one of the projects I should do this year, is to create a a website for my work, my photography, and I've been thinking about this a little bit, and I was thinking, well, you know, website that's so old school these days, isn't it? You know, it's like, well, I want I want some of this metaverse thing, but so I've started having a look at it, uh, and I am. I, I, on one thing, on one point of view, I think, oh, this is great. This could be really interesting. And another point of view, I think, yeah, maybe we're not quite there yet. It's not maybe not consumer grade tooling yet, you so, know, and stuff like that. But. So when we say metaverse, uh, I, I think we need to make clear that that's a generic term because yes. it seems like like uh, Meta, formerly known as Facebook, has sort of co opted that term and been all over. The thing, but metaverse in general is is, is, a, is, a, is a generic term that we, we pretty much uh, um, m- that that can mean a lot of things. It's not a it's not a yeah. Facebook slash Meta. I mean, I think yeah, I thing. think if we, we we kind of parse the word, you know, our universe, which we um, kind of define as something that we perceive as individuals into a singular reality, right? I right. Mean, that's broadly stated um the metaverse would include multiple versions of different realities or perceived realities and uh any of us who spent a significant amount of time within a virtual environment with goggles and sound your brain very quickly rewires and your emotional um, reactions to the occurrences and visuals within it start to feel similar to what you would feel in what we would call the universe. It can be really real. I've I've spent some time in, in the in the Oculus, and um, yeah. it is it's 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 amazing how quickly you accept that virtual reality as reality. Yes, there's, I think, a fundamental reason for that, which is 
the way our brain is wired to perceive what we think of as reality, which we know is an amorphous kind of definition because it's pro highly processed through lenses, smells, sounds, uh, environment, and uh, then flipped by our brain because the light comes in upside down, as Chris, you've spoken about in your childhood many times. Oh, yeah. Uh, and our brain reverses it and makes an adjustment there. Um, also, Adrian, having just had some surgery on the eye, has seen the brain starting to rewire in terms of color. Yeah, uh, definitely. My, my wife just had um, um, cataract surgery and, and in one eye, and now it's gone from like um, a little bit, you know, hazy, a little gray, a little, you know, denser to absolute 2020. And she describes everything as being Kodachrome like <laughs> crispness in terms of color. And her brain starts to pull both eyes together. So the long and the short of it is we process our experiences or our brains um, process our experiences to accommodate. Um, what we perceive as our free will within it. Let's just so, say that. So uh, having that different kind of reality, well, virtual reality, reality. Which, which it is, uh, being a reality, um, it is only a, a logical next step to go and present your, your art in it, your photography. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm thinking to do, right? Because I think, you know, uh, I, I accept the challenge that one of my projects this year should be to, to, to get my work out there. Um, I'm not much of a sharer on social media and, and that doesn't seem to be, you know, uh, the right thing for me, right? Good for other people, perhaps. It's not a criticism, but it's not the right thing for me. And I was thinking if I want some real estate in, 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 the, in the internet, um, you know, a, a place where people can come and see stuff, do I want a website or do I want the metaverse? So well, it's I don't, different. So you know, it would be different because I, it, it, it's like arguing apples and oranges. I think if you if your work is out in a book, the viewer has an experience. If it's in an uh, exhibit framed in a gallery, it has this, another experience. If it is a massive scaled print on the side of a building, it has yet another experience. Same image. Yes. Uh, then on a website, you have a 2D image. And by the way, in the metaverse, we can navigate through on a 2D screen and imagine what the 3D experience would be. Um, and then in a 3D experience, are we then more compelled by the unusual nature of moving through a virtual space in order to experience an image that's as compelling as the image itself? In other words, is the experience of the framing in this case, a metaverse gallery, um, competing with the image itself in terms of the experience. I'm not saying that that's bad or good, but I think you should be um, thinking about doing all of those things and, so, and yeah, seeing how yes. the work presents itself. Well, I mean, as we spoke about last week, my, my new uh, my new film camera, um, you know, the 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 way I intend to present the images from that is very much in in print. Um, to to get the the benefit of, of how that camera works, and it's something that mm -hmm. that's another project I'm interested in. Um, you know, for the but but for the the metaverse thing, it is interesting, and it, it's interesting the way you're describing you know the, how how different media have a different uh, a different impact. Because one of the things I found clunky in my initial research is that the you know a lot of the the metaverse apps or or 3d apps or whatever you want to call them that you can see today they have a very cartoony graphic feel right a lot of them and it's quite glaring in a way uh, to come up against an actual photograph in an environment like that um and and i was thinking so, so that was that was one thing that that really sort of stood out to me as I started doing my initial research is that I wander around in this little cartoony world. For some reason, there seems to be a trend at the moment for people having arms but no legs. Um, and that that is a really weird thing to me uh, because, 
you know, so so I mean, we've already mentioned Neil Stevenson. We might we might as well go for for a bingo card. I'll I'll, I'll volunteer Gibson, right? William Gibson. I happen to be reading the Bridge trilogy at the moment, which I read the first one of those Virtual Light years and years ago, but for some reason never got the second two. So I'm reading the whole trilogy front to back at the moment, and I love the graphic descriptions that Gibson has for cyberspace, as he calls it. Um, you know very different from the Stevenson metaverse um, and, and from other things that we have. And I, and I think, and it got me thinking because I'm, I'm here in the, you know, whatever website I'm looking at or clunky app on my phone or whatever it is. Yeah. Cause I don't have a headset at the moment. So I've got this sort of, s- sort of part skeuomorphic design, right. In, in, in the sense that, in the sense that it's partly looking like humans interacting, right? Uh, uh, but it's partly not because it's all sort of cartoony graphics and nobody has any legs. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, why would we need that metaphor, right? Uh, you know, for for the metaverse. Why why would we need that metaphor of like the top yeah, half of a I human? Why is that the thing that works? You're hitting something very interesting. And like the big the headline here is context matters. Right. If, if you're showing a, um, a photograph, a human interest photograph of the Ukrainian uh, war, right, and, and the, the kind of power and tragedy of, of, uh, of a portrait of uh, a human being suffering with that context, one could argue that the, the most powerful way to see that is in newsprint. I mean, it has been at least for the last, say, you know, 7,500 years where you open it and that picture, forget about quality and exposure, but it, it's so present and real. Even the, the degrading aspect of the, of the newsprint, we talked about newsprint last week too, but it has an impact. If you take that same photograph and create a matted version of it and hang it in a gallery, one now judges the aesthetics of it within that. And it's it's a slightly different or even a major difference of how you respond to the image. And then moving forward from that, if you presented that very image in a, quote, cartoony-like virtual reality situation, I think the work itself would be... I'm, I'm, just imagining this, but but degraded in terms of its import because it would just feel much more of a of a trick, if you were like just. It, whereas if you had a very yes. interesting, abstract, surreal, beautiful image within that same virtual reality, you could have a, a wonderful experience of it because the nature of the image just feels connected to the virtual reality, e- even as the constructs of those metaverses seem made with a lack of imagination, they, they, they seem to want to replicate or duplicate our normal human experience in the world, whereas I see the potential for creating true, uh, quote, off-planet experiences of how to contextualize or decontextualize image reactions that I don't think we've seen yet. And so I I think that currently our lack of imagination is holding down with the use of cartoon-like avatars, our lack of processing power to get it into sort of hyper-reality. These are all things that are at play, and one must think about that in how to present one's image to the public, so I, I'm I'm not sure it's uh, I'm 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 completely with you. Just one point. Uh, the, I don't think the lack of imagination is really a problem. I think it is the uh, the lack of being able to uh, just just the, just the lack of technology at this point. I mean, we're still looking at fairly crude tools that we're working with when we look at the display resolutions and these kind of things that, that we get in the headsets. Yeah, or true. if you want something that's really good, then we need a big uh, investment. 
We need to make yeah. a big investment. I guess so, partly it's it's about the ability to push polyg- polygons, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So yeah, this in used to end, be a thing in games consoles. It's like how many polygons you know, can you of, can you of, process? Yeah, and then of course you need people who who are and, and I'm I'm a hundred percent with you, Jeremiah. The space really informs the perception of the work. So, um, and that space needs to be created in some way because it's not there. Um, no. It has to be conjured up from nothing or from assets that you have in, I don't know, Unreal or in some library, or you build the whole thing from scratch. But that takes, and, and that does take imagination, that takes creativity, and that takes finesse and, and, and technical ability and skill to uh, to build something that is good. Ideally, you'd have someone who's an architect, someone who is who knows how to build spaces, um, to do that same thing in the virtual space. Um, and then, I mean, just... Just, just compare different museums, the Guggenheim versus some other museum. They all inform the perception of what you see there. Well, yeah, no, of course they do. They do, and and one of one of my beefs with um, whether it's um, well with any virtual, and there's some that are being built right now um, that are pretty dazzling, but they all use a familiar architectural um, work. I mean, whether they're beautifully designed or crudely designed, um, they they do create the conditions of rendering and presenting one's work on a wall hung and going up to it and reacting. And what I'm, I'm saying got, is... Yeah, that, that was really weird This is me. an opportunity to go way beyond that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And and to see one's image floating, um, uh, you know, above a city or or a planet, or how to how to move through layers of images. I'm I'm, you know, just making this up as I go. But no, along. this is that's what I meant. That's exactly it, what I meant, though, Jeremiah. About it being, uh, I don't know if in this context, skeuomorphic is is the right word. I mean, you know, a few years back, there were, there was a very different. There were, there were two different aesthetics in a design for Macintosh software weren't there right some of them were very yeah like the notes looked like a notebook and 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 what that yeah what they they refer to that as skeuomorphic you know looking like the real world equivalent and then other bits didn't and it, it, one of the things that I are looking at this the, some of these places um and some of the, yeah and, so, and not not going to all all the places although I've, I've tried to to experience some but then watch some YouTube videos about some other environments and think I'm not sure that that's what I want from a metaverse. I don't, yeah, I don't want it to be a poor substitute for what we have in real life. I want it to take us somewhere else. But let me ask you guys a question, right? Because, and it relates to music. Um, Now, I find that, um, you know, on, on a sunny day, I perhaps, I quite like to listen to music that's been made in California, right? So so you wake up on a sunny day, put some Jane's Addiction on loud, right? And you've got this big happy, it's been made in the sunshine. If I'm driving through a city at night, I want some, you know, I, I want some Bristol trip hop, you know, tricky or massive attack or something like that, because that makes sense, right? You drive through, yeah. or especially driving through South London and putting on some South London type music, you know, made in a tower block in an estate in South London. Sure, and it makes beat, sense. Whatever. Yeah. It makes it. And, and I wonder if, I wonder if the metaverse or art or f- art and photography in the metaverse will really mature when the art is made in that environment and comes from oh, that environment an and therefore question. makes is of that environment. Yeah. Do we want to amplify our experience through context or do we want to familiarize ourselves with the work in okay. a safe place? I, I have another aspect here, another angle. Um, and that is, uh, you, both of you should be old enough to remember the, the ad- advent of desktop publishing. True. Oh, yeah. yeah right? Yeah, yeah. Where all of a sudden, all these studied people who knew typography and layout and everything were being replaced by millions of people with desktop computers who finally had tools where they could put funny letters anywhere on the screen and, and put pictures between them and lay out things. And it, it resulted in a barrage of really bad 
stuff coming out <laughs> because 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 people hadn't studied like relations and placement and uh, and and the whole the whole image composition pretty much of a layouted uh, page mm -hmm. but in the end it also democratized the whole thing and brought a lot of brilliant people i mean remember the, the when when uh, the when wired magazine happened that was a game changer in terms of laying out things and how to sure. uh, how visual language so i believe when we look at metaverse and presenting things in the metaverse we're still at that early desktop publishing kind of phase where a lot of people yeah. are now getting those tools in their hands up given there are still not enough people having goggles and things but that will come uh sooner than later i think um but but a lot of people now have tools in their hands where they can go wild and crazy and do things that are appalling and things that are beautiful and we're still in that phase where where that medium tries to find itself And yet yeah. we have, you know, tens of billions of dollars of investment, early stage, risky uh, investments in this yes. early technology that we've never seen before. We've never seen this kind of monetary investment in a technology in a space. Um, the, I mean, this is really quite unprecedented in terms of the attempt for a what we would consider a land grab be there first you know on on one side you have you know uh facebook meta who are you know desperately trying to turn their their kind of power into the control or whatever uh of of the metaverse um you have a16h you know the you know andreessen's um a venture capital firm that is invested in possibly, I don't know, a thousand different versions of it, knowing that one is going to, uh, you know, emerge. You have, um, what is it, Punk6539, I'm probably getting the number wrong, who's building his own, which is really promising and really beautiful. He comes from art and he comes from you know, a point of view that is kind of widely shared by us. Um, there are so many variants of it, and we can go onto our iPhone and just pull uh, an app like Spatial, and, and it'll be a little gallery created by, I don't know, I guess, engineers and, and algorithms, and, you know, there you go, and just paste something, I've had, I've and it transforms. I had a play with that, actually. Had that particular app, Spatial, I had a play with that. It was yeah. it was quite clunky. It, you know, there were, there were environments that it said, come and look at our environments, even ones they'd made, and then I just got sort of programming-type error messages saying it couldn't connect. Not even not even mm -hmm. user interface error messages, actually things, yeah, like JavaScript error message-type mm -hmm. things. Um, and uh, so, and and that that uh, uh, and and navigating around it, it just it it just felt. That this is the thing I was like trying to to get some tips from you guys because if I'm going to do something like this, I'm going to have a like kick off a project on something like this. So I, I'd like to pick a, a good one, right? You're and, you're you're, you're trying to bank yet. on the winner, pretty much. Now, no, 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 no. I'm very happy to <laughs> to be a throwaway thing. No, no. This I'm very happy for this to be a throwaway prototype. The point, but the point is, is yeah, I haven't yet found an experience that I would want to put anybody through, let alone if the prize at the end of the experience was my photography. Well, let right? me make so, a recommendation so, for you then. Uh, there are many different kind of easily accessed template environments to build a website or to create a website within a template and publish it to the world. That the experience of doing that or the process of doing that is important for your own editorial mm. focus on your own work. It's less about the technology of presentation and more about what does the website want to induce in terms of feeling about the work and how is my work unified or not um, in its presentation? Because that is really, quote, desktop publishing just at the snap of a finger. And it will help you step into the world without going through publishers or gallery shows or framing or shipping. Because even in doing a simple 
show, whether it's a museum show or a gallery show, the amount of <laughs> human engineering that you have to do that has nothing to do with taking photographs or editing photographs is significant and a big time suck and can be very expensive, both from the gallery point of view and the artist's point of view. Um, but a website is not. And it really is about how big do you want the picture on the screen? Do you want it to work on mobile or not? How many pictures in, in a gallery? What do you want to present when somebody comes to the site? Is it a single image? Is it a mosaic of images? They will, th these decisions will help you look at your work in a new way. And I think enable you when you go out to shoot going, oh, these images would really look good in this kind of environment and maybe propel you to do more work in a certain way that you couldn't predict. And mm. so a website at this point, I think, is also the bellwether. It, it, for example, in, in the film industry, if I'm going to have a meeting with a technician or an executive uh, and who I don't know, the first thing I'll do is I'll go to IMDb Pro and I'll look at all their credits. I'll see what they've done so that when I meet with them, I'll know, oh, this person is, you know, he's done a whole bunch of stuff or not. This director has been uh, very prolific, but has never been asked back on a project. <laughs> they only did one. But here's a director who's, you know, done, every time they ask him to do a job, he, they ret he returns, returns, returns. That just sends a signal to me for whatever reason. Mm. Uh, and, and that's crude. It's just text and information and data that's presented on IMDb. A website should be, I feel, very, very simple. In other words, if I want to know they present themselves as an artist or a designer or a photographer... I go to the website and I immediately go, ah, that's what they do. And, and so I don't feel that I'm conscious of the presentation mode of a website now when I visit, like I did in the you know, late 90s, which was like, whoa, this is a whole experience of the web and look, and there's photographs. And yes, it's taking a long time to load, but now it's just like, oh, that photographer click, boom, there, react, embrace, or discard. But, And I think a, a, a website, and they're so easy to make now, you don't have to write code. Um, and, you know, hosting it is easy. They make it very easy in our kind of world to do that. So that would be a good step, I think, and highly recommended. Um, and from then, once that's settled, and I think about this for my own stuff, too, is, is there a link or an adjunct to a virtual site or experience that would amplify some, some, not all, of my work that would really be elevated by a different experience? Um, and that's something, I mean, I haven't, I haven't really, I, I can say that I've just dipped my toe in. I haven't found that yet, but I think it's coming. I set up a gallery back in, I don't know how many years ago, in Second Life. Remember that? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. That was very crude compared to what's happening right yeah. now. Yeah. Oh, I bet, but at least the people in Second Life had legs. <laughs> did they? <laughs> yeah. Second Life itself didn't have legs. but <laughs> No, not really. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I remember Second Life very, very well because I... I I pitched, never got, I never sold this, but I wanted to do a film that took place within Second Life oh. where something had occurred and oh, the, the main clues of a crime were in Second Life and, <laughs> and the, you know, a, a, a very <laughs> un ec uh, untechnological sophisticate of a this, detective had to go in. Do you, do you know the way to make money like that these days, Jeremiah, seems to be to be a YouTuber with, you know, with, um, you know, soap operas you know, filmed in Minecraft. 
um you but, know yeah, there, there's so guess, there's yeah. so much of that these days Ha yes. having younger kids i see a lot of this yeah um, roblox my, my granddaughter would, plays in roblox yeah. and it's this would be the nice. the opposite of a timeless movie then you know <laughs> <laughs> Minecraft is kind of timeless, isn't it? Because it's not it's not Still, pretending yeah. to be state of the art. Anything, you can, in in twenty years, you'll look back on it and go, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, two thousand and twenty, two thousand twenty one, yeah. two thousand nineteen. That was it. Uh, it is but, tricky. So, so are we coming to a are we coming to a conclusion then that may, maybe that that. If I'm if I'm to present my work, the two things I'm getting from this conversation: one is that the process to go through to get to that point of presenting my work is going to help me grow as an artist in my own right, right? Which I think Jeremiah is your point. One hundred percent, yes. And and secondly, that the metaverse is not the right place at the moment to, to begin. To, to, to begin at this to point. Begin. Okay, to begin as the, I think as the entry point, yes. As, yes, I, I, I think the, the metaverse is an interesting exploration to, because I think everyone in it, the architects that are building it, the engineers that are informing it, the, the creators that are applying their work to it, and the viewers that are kind of navigating it through, and the investors that are building an economy there, are all trying to figure out where the balance is. Nobody knows. There isn't certainty there, which makes it both really interesting and exciting. And that's why there's so much energy there. If you just allow that money is energy. And so that's yeah. what's coming in. And like Beeple's work, you know, Mike Winkleman, uh, that $69 million sale a year ago, um, is a direct response to promotion of a metaverse um, opportunity for people. It, it lit up that space. He was the beneficiary of it. But those who bought the work, they weren't just buying work. They were buying the publicity that came with the work to build a museum in the space that featured all of his work over 15 years um, and drew a lot of people and money, etc. So was it a good buy or not? Oh, I, I don't have the finances. Well, it was part of their investment in their own future, wasn't it? So, well, that, that was know, the, the, in the a very interesting that, way. Yeah, I mean, that, that $70 million, is, if I recall rightly, was in some, in some way funding for the whole venture in the first place. You know, it wasn't that an art collector, uh, an independent art right. collector paid $70 million. It was the people who were promoting the technology and, and thinking of it as part of an investment. To, to It was a marketing activity. Yeah, fu fundamentally, though, though there is a great appreciation of his work that has, you know, oh, I, yes. I think little, yeah. little to do with the investment in it. But so, I mean, I think, you know, the point is that we haven't settled on what the A- the experience is, what the design is, what it should be. And and I think the limitations of goggles 3D, we've talked about this endlessly. I think when Apple comes up with something that is just like these glasses, uh, wirelessly and don't cause brain cancer, I think we're going to have a very exciting way to experience first AR, right? Because we that's the other thing that we haven't talked about. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to hand somebody some glasses and say, here, I, I just want to show you some images of mine. You put the glasses on that person, they look up and they see an image that is, you know, 65 feet by 100 feet in front of them in, in, in their, their world, environment. Yes, in their environment. That is powerful and significant and amazing because they don't have to think about where they are they know they can look down they have their feet but the image itself given quality and streaming and all of the rest of it would be a, a different way to see the work and one could almost uh, imagine that people will build galleries specifically to create environments for people to wear them and walk around and, and see them or in one's own house. So I think those are really interesting things that we are going to start seeing more of as the, as Chris said, the technology gets more and more sophisticated, faster, smarter, cheaper, and, and of course, um, accessible because it has to be accessible too. 
Mm. Right. So while you're waiting, make a website. <laughs> yeah, play play with it. I think that's you have to dip your toe somewhere in. And yes, they think these things might be clunky initially, um, and then something will emerge over time, and then that yeah. old clunky thing might be a throwaway and be replaced by something else. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, listen, guys, thank you very much for your advice. Um, uh, it's not quite. I, this is one of the reasons I love having these conversations, because it's not quite where I thought we'd go. But that's brilliant. That's the, that's that's the fun of it, isn't it? All right. Yeah. Um, and to round this episode off, we have all three of us brought a pick of the week. Uh, b- by the way, before we, we, we get to our picks, I, I think that that one of the things that we could focus on in the future is an actual exploration of metaverse environments, each of us selecting one and really exploring a experience of it. I haven't spent near enough time to, to be able to talk sensibly about it. And then, and then talk um, about it in an audio, mostly audio podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'd, have to, we'd have to do it. We'd have to do better than that, wouldn't we? Really? Well, we do have video, so that could at least be a two D representation there's a version, of things. There's a version of this that could go into a metaverse. And well, and and uh, and uh, YouTube does have a 360 three D mode kind of thing if that's you have it. the right goggles. So, well, yeah, yeah. Let's. Anyway, Let's see. To the this, picks. This, this might be a technical challenge, first of all. <laughs> anyway, the picks, the picks. I'll I'll present mine first because, um, as I said in the beginning, I spent a week. Monica and I spent a week up in the north uh, on an island, and uh, I did what you do when you're on vacation. I uh, shot a few snip- snippets of video, put them together. I have channeled my inner filmmaker, and it ended up uh, being. Being one of these completely unmotivated videos with like no real story, just uh, pictures and some music and sheep and <laughs> stuff Very in nice. there, and uh, I, I try to figure out some funny angles here and there, and it ended up being a nice memento to bring home, and uh, oh. it's, it was a pretty quick thing to do. And it was a lot. I'm of liking. Fun. The, I'm so, liking the farmyard close-ups. I, yeah, yeah they're, they're, that's they're, good. They're good. Uh, Chris, have you noticed um, the uh, Apple? You know, when they send you these daily little film clips that they put together. The memories, yeah. I, I'm always shocked and surprised at how good they are. So here's. I I did not use that because I shot these videos on a little GoPro clone on my phone, mm-hmm. on my DSLR, and on an other camera. Mm-hmm. So there were like four cameras involved. And those four cameras, um, I did, in order to get one of these memories things, you will really have to have everything in one universe, in this case, in the, in the Apple universe. It has to be all <laughs> tagged. It has to be all geotagged and so on to really work well. And that is just yeah didn't just didn't wasn't happen comparing <laughs> it wasn't them i was just saying that the experience of you know, oh yeah waking these, up to those are always odd Interesting. these are these are amazing experiences oh yeah we saw seals as well so yeah that's very california and pigs so yeah. Anyway, that was that was my little thing. <laughs> not not nice. it's not gonna nice to have not, a holiday video. It's not gonna win any Oscars, but um, it's a Are nice. Are you saying it's not Koyana Squatsy? <laughs> it's not quite Koyana Squatsy. Yeah. Um, I even found some cheap stock music that wasn't too bad. So yeah. there you go. There you go. Um, Jeremiah, you brought us Lightform. Yeah, it's it's something that you know. Obviously, you know, this is about creating images and using the real world at the same time to transform both the image and the real world. It's a kind of, of reality augmentation of sorts. Yes, well, well put, well put. So Projection mapping. Um, yes, and for those who aren't familiar, it, it, it is a way of, of using LiDAR, I guess, um, to to map or analyze uh, the environment in front of one's camera or lens uh, and then 
take that and project an image exactly on the actual environment that wraps around. And depending on what kind of image one processes to apply to that real world um, architecture, if that's the case, uh, it's very, very um, powerful when one sees it. And these things are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and more sophisticated so that you don't need a massive array of huge processors um, in order to scan the reality nor apply. So it is, it's a tool that can be very useful for artists. Especially with, with smartphones that now have LiDAR on board and can do yeah. photogrammetry. And um, yeah, the tools are in our pockets. It's just a matter of... Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a new way, and, and we see experiential art popping up all over the world, um, both in terms of, say, a club use, or people map classic buildings, churches, etc. Um, there's an exhibit opening um, with Rafik, I forget his last name, uh, on Gaudi, where he's transformed the Gaudi classic buildings with projection mapping and analysis that really uh, turns them effectively into animation. And um, it's, these, it's very, very, um, it's a new tool that I think will become smaller, faster, better, and create more live experiences, which and I more, think have And more accessible to everyone. Yeah. All right. And last but not least, Jim, uh, Adrian, you brought us something about drones. Oh, my, yeah, my, mine's a fun one. So uh, this is uh, a YouTube video uh, from Red Bull, um, uh, but it's one that focuses on drone photography um, rather than the, the sporting, the crazy sporting things that they usually have. Uh, so it is a crazy sporting thing. It is an urban downhill bicycle. Oh, I've seen time that. trial race. It is. It's just crazy um, watching it. Um, how, how anybody could cycle like that is just amazing. Um, but what they've done is they've done a, a, a drone follow shot for the whole run. And so this video is about this first person view drone pilot um, who has you know, who is trying to follow these bikes as they go down very very tight steps and round really sharp corners and under trees and through buildings and he's got to fly this drone basically just behind the shoulder of the cyclist um uh, and it's just astonishing it really is just astonishing what he's achieved with this drone um uh so uh, it's just a bit of fun uh and uh enjoyable to watch and it, it makes you really tense because you think he's gonna crash it he's gonna <laughs> crash it <laughs> and it's it's think- amazing to see the result because that is some of the best flying that I've seen in, in a long time. Yeah, the FPV amazing. scene is, is, has brought, brought forth quite a few amazing talents. I mean, it it has, you? yeah. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't do this without, uh, without that FPV because you, you, you simply couldn't move quickly enough or, or, or establish any place where you could see the drone for the whole of the length of the shot. Um, so Have you seen it, the new Snapchat drones that are... I, I I've seen them advertised. Yeah, that's that's interesting, isn't it? The you know the the selfie drone. I mean, when I know we talk occasionally about selfie drones. I mean, Snapchat are just in the business of selling them now, aren't they? So. I, I know the flight time three minutes. <laughs> is wow. that is that all it is? Okay, that's it. it. Basically, you just put it out there. It lifts up. Uh, it has several modes: a selfie, a wide selfie, or a fall. You know, it, it doesn't do much. It's simplicity, but, you know. It's it's uh, it doesn't overwhelm people. You don't fly people. it either. No, you don't. It's, fly a, it. it's a lot of money it's for, for simplicity. Two hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. It's, yes. There's people who wanna wanna have that experience, and for for yeah. Snap, I think it's a it's a way to explore the space and to grow and yeah. uh, come yeah. up with even weirder things. Anyway, yeah. that is it for this episode of the Future Photography. Ah, I, I might have to dig out my old second life skills and go back into <laughs> uh, into building 3D spaces and things. That would be fun. Uh, I'd like to see and then, that. And then we'll do a show from second. <laughs> oh yeah, a virtual show with with us with legs or without legs. We'll figure that out <laughs> as we go. 
<laughs> this I will. Yeah, we, we, could, we could make this into a virtual, completely virtual thing. Mm, so, sure. at one point in the future, that might happen. You can find us at thefuturephotography.com or TFOP now on the interwebs. We'll be back um, with more soon. Until then, everyone, take care and uh, come back. Bye. We'll, we'll be back. Bye bye. Bye bye. You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com.